Arizona is one of the top three states in the country for solar energy potential, yet renewable energy like solar and wind make up a small percent of the state's current energy makeup. One Arizona group wants to change that this November election. Cronkite News reporter Rachel Charlton explains. Proposition 127 would mandate that Arizona utility companies get 50% of their electricity from renewable sources by 2030. The Arizona Constitution sets the current standard at 15% by 2025. Clean Energy for Healthy Arizona collected hundreds of thousands of signatures to get Proposition 127 on the November ballot. I think most Arizonans understand that solar could really be a huge resource here. And right now, we're, we're just not doing it. There are over 300 sunny days in Arizona. Solar energy accounts for more than 5% of the state's total energy generation. Arizonans for Affordable Electricity oppose the proposition. Matthew Benson, a spokesman for the group, says Arizonans can expect an increase in utility costs if Proposition 127 is approved. Prop 127 is going to significantly increase the cost of electricity in Arizona. For the typical Arizona family, that means $1,000 or more in added utility costs over the course of the year. The two groups disagree on whether Proposition 127 would create more jobs and if bringing more renewable energy to the valley would force the closure of the Palo Verde nuclear plant. And they don't agree about the cost of implementing Proposition 127. If we were to you know, take a turn this year and pass Proposition 127, what would happen is a pretty substantial and remarkable increase in our solar industry right away which really could bring in a lot of good jobs and, and, and actually cut down on cost. Closing current power plants, bringing online new resources, and all of those costs get passed along to guess who? Ratepayers. And that's the reason that ratepayers will see their costs go up drastically if this becomes part of the Constitution. Lincoln Davies is a University of Utah law professor who studies renewable energy policy. He says this citizen push for increasing renewable energy isn't just an Arizona issue. Similar initiatives are on the ballot this November in Nevada and Washington state. The idea of these laws was to drive down the cost of renewables over time so that they could be scaled up as technologies and be used across the grid. But not everyone is on board with that. Arizonans for Affordable Electricity is backed by the parent company of Arizona Public Service and other utility companies. They've raised more than $11 million to get voters to say no to Proposition 127. Davies says this is not surprising. As solar has become really a uh, powerful influence in terms of how electricity is getting produced in the United States, you're starting to see pushback from a lot of utilities and other political constituencies in different states against some of these measures, especially as they become more stringent. Meanwhile, Clean Energy for a Healthy Arizona says a measure like Proposition 127 encourages Arizona to keep up with neighboring states and stay competitive in the renewable energy industry. The group has raised more than $8 million to convince voters it's worth it. Most of that money has come from the Political Action Committee Next Gen Climate Action. If voters approve Proposition 127 in November, utility companies could be fined up to $5,000 if they don't meet requirements. If the proposition fails, Arizona's renewable energy requirement of 15% by 2025 stays in place. The deadline to register to vote in this November election is October 9th. In the Broadcast Center, Rachel Charlton, Cronkite News.